Uh, good morning, Church of the City. How you doing today? Are you happy to be here this morning? Come on, are you happy to be here? Come on, don't just sit there. You should be happy to be here today. Amen. Hey, I'm excited about this morning. We're doing things completely different. So if you're, if you were uh, expecting me to preach, you ain't gonna get that this morning. Uh, so, I, okay, all right, thanks. Love you too. I'm glad you were the only one that did it. I mean, if, ever, if the whole room was like, whoa, I would have been like, all right, I quit. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But you don't get to hear from me too much today. Do you hear from a group full of people, though? It's going to be good. Um, hey, we're going to be giving you our, uh, our vision for this year. Amen. And uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Some of the things that you're going to hear in the upcoming minutes, I think, is really going to bless you. Um, there's some goals that we are going to do. And uh, listen, we're not just putting these goals forth um, for you to just listen to and, and just because it sounds nice or it would be good if we accomplished it as a church. But let me tell you something. We are going to make them happen this year. Amen? Come on, I need some more confidence with that. Come on, we're going to make it happen this year. It's going to work. It's going to be good. And everything that we set our hearts to, everything that we have believed God for, that we have sought God for, it shall come to pass this year. Amen? So I believe in that. So before we go into our goals and all of that, there were seven things that I believe that God wanted to do in 2022. If you want to write these down, I'm going to go through them quick. They're, some of them are a little bit wordy, so you'll have to write quickly. I can give them to you after service if you need it. It's not a problem at all. Um, this is not particular to our specific church. I believe that when I say these things here in just a minute, I'm declaring these things. These are for the church as a whole. And uh, either we'll be obedient to what God is saying or we won't. Uh, but I believe that those are, that are obedient to what the Lord is speaking right now in this hour, I believe God's going to do amazing, radical things. Come on, how many of you are ready for the supernatural to be unleashed in our churches? And notice I said churches, because I care about the church in general. I don't care just about church of the city. I love the church. I want, I want to hear about a move of God down the street. Come on, somebody. Hey, you don't want to? I, I do. I want to. I want to hear other churches start to erupt with the power of God. Come on, because when the church can get in unity, and when the church can experience those things and walk in the supernatural, let me tell you, that's when it gets the city's attention. That's when it gets the community's attention. So that's what we're believing for this year. Amen. So there's seven things that I believe that God is going to do in 2022. I want you to listen. Number one is this. Altars will become more important than stages. I should have got the biggest shout in the world for that one right there. Altars will become more important than stages. Number two, our reputation in heaven will be more important than our reputation on earth. Come on, I'm tired of titles. I'm tired of names. I'm tired of positions. I'm tired of all those kind of things. Come on, I just want to be known in heaven. That's all that it's about. Number three, and this has already begun, I believe, through our fast. So today's day 15, I believe, of our 21-day fast. So good job for those that are, yeah, you, you may have made it quite a long ways already. All right. Number three, personal radical devotion will begin. I'm not just talking about devotion. I believe for personally for yourself that radical devotion. God is going to take you into a season of radical devotion. When you spend time with him and then all of a sudden, man, you just get so lost in his presence. I mean, that you literally feel like you're ascending to heaven. I'm telling you, I believe that this is our time. Number four, this is a little bit different. So please hear my heart. Imposters, because my kids love, what is that? Among us. Thank you guys. I had to use the word imposters. Imposters with hidden agendas will be exposed. Man, so many times, I'm telling you, the enemy sneaks in unaware, right? That's what the Word of God says. But I believe that the Lord is exposing the schemes of the enemy. Amen? Hallelujah. Number five, we will be more concerned with our inheritance than our brand. We will be more concerned with our inheritance than our brand. 
You know, it's so easy as a congregation and as a church to want to make your brand known. You never heard of Church of the City? You want to make your brand known. But I believe that we're going to be more concerned with our inheritance. Amen? Come on, how many of you know we got a great inheritance? Hallelujah. Stored for us. Number six, we will stop giving God our agendas and simply surrender all. I know that's really simple, but I believe that there's many of us that may have drifted away from that simple thing like that is, man, just surrendering all. When's the last time God really spoke to you? When's the last time you really spent intimate time with the Father? When was the last time you led someone to the Lord? If I said, and I don't do it, but if I said by a show of hands, raise your hand, and if in the last month you led someone to the Lord, I can guarantee you maybe one or two might go up, but that's about it. Nothing against you. I just believe it's time for some change. I believe it's time for some full surrender. We can't complain about our situation if we can't even share Jesus. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Come on, we have got to start surrendering all. Amen? And number seven, we will not try to impress, but we will do everything for the glory of God. And why is that? Because everything that doesn't give God glory will be removed. Everything that doesn't give God glory will be removed. So I believe in 2022, I believe in this season that God is disrupting the church for the glory. Amen? I believe that the glory, the manifested presence of God is going to be made known to us unlike ever before. We're going to see it. It's going to be revealed to us. We're going to experience it. I really, really believe that. And I believe this is a time that God is literally going to disrupt the church, but in a good way. Amen? Because listen, a fractured church cannot heal a broken world. A fractured church cannot heal a broken world. So I believe that this is our comeback season. I believe that God is setting us up. Amen? Come on, if you believe those seven things that I just said, I want you to shout amen in this place. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, I'm going to ask some of our staff to come join me on stage. And uh, we're excited because we're going to give you our vision for the year and uh, you're going to really enjoy it. So you have a note card that was given to you. I'm going to give these guys time to get up here. You have a note card that was given to you and um, when you walked in the door and if you didn't get that, if you'll just raise your hand high, um, if you got a little if you didn't get a note card and pen that's not for you to take notes on um, today. Um, you can use your phone or whatever else for that but that is for you to at the end to ask questions and uh, we will be passing those cards um, and we will be answering some of those questions today. We're not going to get to all of them. I apologize. But we will receive those questions and we will answer those questions, okay? And we will let you know the answers to those questions via email, uh, Facebook, all the kind of ways that we communicate to you, okay? And so be mindful of that. We will get to some of them today. But you're not going to ask your questions yet. You're going to wait till the end. We're going to open it up for questions then. Amen. And so um, I'm going to, Josh, you're good. I'm going to start us off this morning. Um, and and the, first thing that, the first thing that I want to say, well, well, first of all, hopefully everybody knows everybody on the stage here. I mean, if, if, you, if you, you should. All right, this is Buster. Hey. So Buster has for almost, well, yeah, almost three years, has ran all of the, the tech team and led that and has done an incredible job. Uh, everything that you see is, is this, this guy right here. Online streaming, all that kind of stuff, you know, lights, camera, action, right? That's, that's all him. And, uh, but uh, he'll be sharing a little bit more in depth about some different things that are going to be going on with, with that as well. But um, that's, that's Buster. And then we got Jalen. Everybody, everybody give it up for Jalen. 
And Jalen is uh, what, what we call is on our executive team, help us make some big decisions, especially when it comes to finances for the church. And uh, we believe in being accountable and all that. I've known Jalen for over 10 years. We've been, we've been friends for a long time and went to Christ for the Nations together. And Jalen and his wife, Chris, have been a part of the church now for, since day one, three years. Yeah, come on, give it up for them. And last but not least, we got Caleb. Hey, Caleb Chapman and uh, Caleb and his wife, Lindsay, here on the front row are over our youth ministry, and um, God is doing big things in there, and I believe it's going to continue to get better and better and better, and uh, so God is good, amen? All right, so we were kind of, we've been meeting a lot just as a small team like this the last couple of weeks and really just kind of seeking the Lord. Lord, what do you want for this year? What what is what is it that is our goals for this year? And we've been brainstorming together and listening to the Lord together, strategizing together. And there was this overall theme that just came to us after it was all said and done. It was like, this is this is the theme. Like, this is what we believe God is, is doing this year. And all of the things that you hear will today will point back to the theme. Um, so the theme is this. This is our vision theme, to invest into our community and our congregation. Okay? Invest into our congregation and into our community. Now, the word invest there is, is, a, is a good word. It's a big word. And you'll understand why we chose the word invest, because we really believe in investing into everything that you're going to hear in the next few minutes. Okay? So I'm going to sit down because... If I don't sit down, then y'all are going to st- want to stand up every time, too. So I'm going to get comfortable, all right? I'm a, I never get to sit up here, so I'm going to take advantage of this. I'm just kidding. Okay, so if you're, if you're taking notes of any sort, which we want you to, we want you to really understand all this today, and um, we want you to constantly remind yourself um, of what God is doing here at the church and of these goals that we're going to accomplish this year um, and, uh, and be mindful of those things. Um, we're going to constantly remind ourselves throughout the year of these things as we, as we uh, begin them or as we are partly through them or as we complete them. And um, you'll see that we've got this big old board that, um, well, it was ordered but didn't get here. Uh, anyways, that's a long story. But but uh, we got this big board that actually has all of our vision goals for the year, and it's going to be out there where everybody can see it every single Sunday when you walk in. It's going to have everything on there, and as we complete those things, we're going to check them off, and we're going to celebrate as a church. It's going to be wonderful uh, because we don't want to just say it and not do it. Come on, can I get an amen? I'm not a sayer and a not a doer, okay? If, if we're going to say it, we're going to do it, amen? And this is why these things had to come from the Lord, because we can't do it in our own strength, right? So there are, uh, there are eight things that we're going to give to you today. There's eight goals for this year. Um, and so I'm just, we're going to go in order, and uh, we're each going to have a chance to, to speak. Um, I only get to go once. These guys told me that they get to go a couple times. I only get to go once, so... That's it for me. So here's my one and done right here. Um, So number one is this. Uh, Number one is we are going to begin and complete phase three of the Heart for the City campaign. Oh, that was weak. Come on. Can I get a cheerful amen for that? It was only through our campaign that we were able to get into this place, that we raised the money. And that was phase one, and it was only by phase two that we were able to accomplish a lot of other things, like build our kids' classrooms and stuff like that. Um, But there are still many more things that we want to do here. You may walk in and be like, well, this is a beautiful place. This is great. There's nothing wrong. You don't need nothing. Well, that... That may be your opinion, and uh, I'll appreciate your opinion, Uh, but I believe God has some other stuff for us, amen? And we are going to invest in what God gave us right here. This this place is in our hands, and we want to invest into it, and we want to nurture it, and we want to steward it well. And so uh, I'm going to give you a few examples of what we're going to be doing to uh, invest and prioritize into our next generation. So phase three is all about investing and prioritizing the next generation. Uh, so the, one of the things that we're going to do, we've already got permission for it. Everything's already good to go. Just got to raise the money for it. We're going to be building a children's playground in the back. Yeah. Yeah. You say, well, I don't have kids. I don't care about that. Well, the person next to you might. And uh, I do. So I hope you care about my kids. Um, 
but we want to provide a space where our kiddos, especially during events and other things, can go and have a wonderful place to, to play. And, and when it's good weather, can go outside and learn their lesson outside and uh, enjoy, enjoy all that that the nature gives. Um, so that's one of the things. Um, the second thing is that we want to be able to host youth and kid events, okay? Youth and, youth and children events, like uh, the VBS coming up in the summer. Uh, that this doesn't just come together with, with at no cost. It, it takes money. Uh, we want to start to do things in the youth ministry, such as lock-ins and, uh, and, and events that they can go to. And we want to start looking at things like going to, going to uh, uh, youth, youth events and youth conferences and youth, youth concerts and all that kind of stuff. I mean, like they, these, these young people deserve all these kind of things. And these kiddos, these kiddos deserve some of these things. The next thing that we're talking about is we want to resource these two ministries, kids and youth. We want to resource them with everything that they need to continue. Yeah, go ahead. Hello. Yeah. There you are. So I unmuted it before I came up here. That means somebody muted it after <laughs> I left it back. <laughs> what does resource mean? So resource, we want to provide upgrades for what we have. Um, some of the toys that are sitting in these rooms we've had for three years and they've been snotted on for three years. All right. We want to upgrade those things, but they're clean. Don't we bleach them down. Okay. Believe me. Uh, but there's, there's equipment and there's toys and there's all different kinds of things that we want to make sure that we upgrade, that we don't just came, keep the same stuff, you know, that we just keep providing good, good, nice things for, for kids and for the youth. And the biggest thing really above all of it is to provide a better budget for the two departments. Um, we need to provide a, a healthier, better, stronger budget for both kids and for youth. Um, and uh, because, you know, it takes, it takes money to do these things. So that's how we want to resource them. And uh, the last thing um, that we have a, a part of the of, of, of the campaign is to um, get some signs, some get some signage for the kids' rooms. Um, so that way when parents come, we don't just have to explain where they need to go and all that, but we can have signage out there that talks about what age group belongs in that room and all that kind of stuff. And so we just want to make it look nice out there and we want to upgrade it and, and make it look better. So um, that's that. So we have a goal uh, here and it's a big goal. And you say, man, this is more than we've ever raised before. And it is. It's a lot more than we ever raised before. But I believe God can do it. Come on, I said, I believe God can do it. Amen. So phase three, we're going to raise $50,000 this year. Come on, can I get an amen? Come on, this is to invest into the next generation. It, it might not personally affect you, okay, or your family, but there are young people that are coming up behind us, come on, that need everything that we want to provide for them this year, amen? And so we're going to raise the money. And I know that sounds scary because phase one and phase two were $25,000 marks. And we met those marks and we got it. And so nothing is impossible with God. Come on, somebody say amen. I could stand up right now and start preaching to you about sowing and reaping and all that kind of stuff. But I believe that if we sow into this next generation, that God is going to do big things. Amen? $50,000, we will accomplish it. I'm done. So I think we need to share something with them about that, though, don't we? I think so. So between the four of us, we've committed the first $1,500. So we're 3% of the way there. There Day one. So yeah. 3% down, 97% to go. Um, yeah, we're just believing God that he's going to do great things this year. Amen. Amen. And there's going to be more that comes from us. We just want to set the standard, and we want to let you know that's already been done. Because we believe. We believe in it. We're not just saying this, and we're not just telling you, you need to do this, okay? Uh, but we are investing into this already. We believe in it. Amen. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. All right, number two, Caleb take us there, brother. Well, you know, I just want to uh, welcome everybody. I'm so excited for what this season is going to bring. Uh, but I want to piggyback off of something what Pastor Austin is, talks about every single week, and that's being led by the Holy Spirit. And what we, we all agree upon up on the stage, and I know most of us out here uh, in the community and in the congregation believe it's being led by the Holy Spirit and being obedient towards the word of God. And, and we talk about week in and week out, sowing back into the church. And that's something that point number two is going gonna, is gonna to bring is 
investing into the local churches and ministries. And it's so important because we as a staff, we as a church, we want to be leaders. We want to put our best foot forward. We talk about it week in and week out every time I come up here and close. We talk about giving, and, and we want to reflect that back into the local church. Uh, to be more specific, new churches that are starting up. You know, we want to help the new churches. We are all in one accord here uh, trying to do what's right towards the kingdom of God. Amen? And we want to start with the startup churches by giving back and, and sowing into the churches that are just beginning. Because we, we, we as a church know how hard it is. And so we want to be a support factor for all of the starting up churches that are local here. And of course, sowing back into our oversight, the ones that invest into us, we want to invest back into them. And investing into churches we hey, already have relationships with. Yes, sir. So on, on the invest into our oversight, you might think, like, why does the church that oversees us need our money? Like, who's with, like, is anybody thinking that right now? That they don't need our money. They don't. Like, they're fine. They're great. But it's an honoring thing, right? Yes. So we want to invest back into Overflow Church because they, they're our oversight, and, and they provide covering to us, and it's a way that we can honor them. And so that's something that's really important to us is to honor those who, who are investing into us. And that, and that just truly goes into us trying to be obedient to the word and us trying to mimic what God is telling us all to do. And that's sowing back. And, and then uh, the last one, just, just the sowing in general, um, back into the churches and ministries. Um, we want to make a commitment this year of giving our full 10% uh, of what we bring into the church, making that commitment back into the local church and ministries. Now, point number three, I'm going to move on here because I'm taking two back to back. Hey, and, Caleb. Yes, sir. Before we do that, I've got this, I got this offering bucket right here. Okay. And we're going old school. All right, I brought this thing up here. Yeah. It don't look like an offering bucket, but it is. All right, it is to me. I'm putting this sucker right here, and I've got cash in my pocket, and I want to begin to sow into somebody's church like Pastor Devondre, who's, been pre who's preached at this church several times, who today and for the next few weeks, they're closed down because they've got a staff of about four people, and that's all they got, and they all have COVID right now. And he was texting me this morning. It's discouraging. And they don't, it's, it's, it's rough. I, I want to sow into guys like that. I, I'm putting the first seed in right now. I'm telling you, as a church, we're not playing around this year. I'm sowing a seed right now. I, you don't, okay, I'll do it for you. God wants to do something. There are churches Praise, come on, you ought to be praising God right now. You don't have to have cash, whatever. I'm not, I'm not trying to get you to, I'm not forcing you to do anything. But there are churches out there that, that need what we're talking about. We're blessed here. And we're going to raise this money and, and for our campaign and all that. Thank you, sir. But I believe that God is, is pleased and he's honored when we can sow into other churches. I know of churches that are struggling right now. Let's bless them. You may never step foot into their sanctuary, and may, may, I may never either, but we can sow into them. Amen? Amen. I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but no, um, I, I just believe that right there. I believe that, that we need to invest uh, already right now, that we're putting our best foot forward, as Caleb said. And listen, we're the example right here. We're the example. And I, I started out. Donna gave me that $5 this morning when she walked in, and Donna... There he goes, right there. Five dollars. That's it. I know it doesn't go. That's all I got in my pocket right now. I don't got any more cash. But Donna, you invest. You invest that. You gave that money to me. So here you go, Pastor. And listen, that's going right back into the local church. Come on, somebody say yeah. Amen. Can we get? Can we give a shout of praise real quick? Come on. Amen. Come on. Come on. It's amazing. And I'm gonna hold off on my sew in here real quick. But if if you feel led to come up here and give to the offering while we're just chit chatting here more than welcome to if you got any cash on you in any other way you'd like to give. But moving on to point three here, uh, we are going oh, to... Oh, yeah. Hey, well, if you want to give, you can text. Oh, text. 84321. 
It's not on the, it's not on the screen, but I think you can remember. Eight four three two one. Eight four three two one. Text any number to that, and and we'll make sure that it gets to uh, Pastor Devondre. Yeah. Is there a tagline they can specify? Oh yeah. How did, is it just? Okay, so if you text to give today, it's probably going to Pastor Devondre. So don't text your tithe today. <laughs> Unless you want your tithe to go to Pastor Devondre. Hey, come on. Uh, but yeah, text 84321, or if you have cash or check, you can drop that in. And this is uh, separate from our normal you know, tithes and offerings. This is specific for um, our outreach. Awesome. Thank you, Buster. So moving on to number three. We are going to launch the community outreach ministry. Yeah. So, and this was what I was waiting on. Uh, you know, I think us, us as a staff up here, we want to give a shout out to Brother Terry yeah. for giving back to the homeless community with the blankets that you invest into them. So that is going to be what I will be sewing into this morning and giving my cash to is getting some additional blankets to the homeless community. Hey, that's good, bro. No, that's I'll, good. I'll just, I'll just add it into there. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah. with all the weather that we have coming in, there's less fortunate out there that we want to bless as a church and people that are already a part of our community here are doing that. We want to we wanna piggyback off of that and, and bless the, the homeless with the homeless ministry that, that we'll be putting together and that we'll be launching. But my next point here is not everybody can make it into the church. Not everybody can be here every Sunday morning, and we want to be an outreach to the community. And another, another point here is the nursing home ministry that we're going to start up. You know, the, the people that just simply can't make it here, elderly people, we want to go to them. We want to bless them with the word. That's what we're all called to do, is to get out of the church this is amazing. Praise and worship is amazing, especially this morning. It was absolutely incredible. And, and what Pastor Austin has an opportunity to preach on a Sunday by Sunday basis and just being in the environment of the Holy Spirit really blesses us on a week to week basis. But we want to take what's in here and bring it out to the community and bless the nursing homes that are out there and really bring the word into that type of entire uh, environment, excuse me. Uh, but we want to continue our drives for the year. Just naming a couple here. It's our backpack supply drive. Yeah, yeah, give a little praise for that. Christmas toy drive. We, we want to continue those and, and continue to have that outreach into the community through those drives and blessing people that are less fortunate. And, and these are all of where the congregation's money that you guys bless us with is going in areas like this. But our events that we put on on a year-to-year -year basis, it's our annual parking lot events being the National Night Out, the Easter Fest, woo! <laughs> uh, and uh, our Trunk or Treat, which we got a part, uh, we, we had a part in it last year, and it was so much fun to be out in the parking lot and blessing kids with family and having everybody have such a good time and got to race and <clears throat> beat Pastor Austin in the uh, bounce house that we did. Not uh, just throwing that out there for everybody, but uh, we're having such a good time at all these events, you know, bringing the community out and just being able to give back and, and uh, bless the community back. I'm sorry, my little, my little Shay up here got a little cry. Yeah, amen. That's what that was. Yeah, of course. But, uh, but yeah, that's some of the things that we'll be giving back to the community and just so blessed to be in the position where we can do that for others and, and uh, just, just so excited for what we're going to be doing this year and, and being a part of it with all of you guys. So that's what I've got. So Awesome. Hey, y'all excited to launch this community outreach ministry? Uh, we want everybody that can or wants to to be a part of that and uh, whatever way that that looks like. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be really good, um, and I'm really excited about it. All right, Jalen. Amen. So we're also going to be launch launching a prayer ministry. And um, how, how many of you have needed prayer throughout the week and just needed someone to pray with you? Amen. So what we're going to be doing is... Um, huh? 
okay. This ain't a rap concert, homie. I'm, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not used to mics, so. <laughs> so um, we're going to be coming up with a number so that everyone can get, you know, and they can make calls throughout the week, no matter what time it is, from, you know, early in the morning, late at night, no matter what time it is, you guys will have access to this number to be able to call in, and it'll be connected to one of us and even other people in the church, you know, depending on what week it is, I guess. <laughs> no, but um, we want to make this number available to each and every one of you so that, you know, you can call whenever you need prayer, you know, whether it's men issues, we want to be able to, you know, have men to come together and pray. If it's one woman issues, if it's a, you know, you want to pray with another woman, we'll have another woman available to pray with you. And not only that, but um, we'll be making calls as well, you know, to, to the members of the church and whoever else wants their number to, you know, for us to call them and just pray with them. And it's going to be awesome. Not only that, but um, if you have a prayer request, we're going to have some cards available to where you can fill that prayer request card out. If you want us to give you a card, just put your number on it and we'll be able to call you and pray with you. But we'll also be praying praying for you as a, um, as, as a staff. In our staff meeting, we'll be praying for the congregation. And on Thursday mornings, too. And on Thursday mornings, too. There you go. And not only that, but um, number four, we'll be doing a monthly fast. So, you know, how many of you know that prayer is powerful? When we come together and pray together, man, the Lord just comes down. And like it says, we're two or more gathered. Here he is in our midst. Right. So we want to stand on that. So um, we'll be doing uh, monthly fast, no matter what the issue is. If you want somebody to fast with you, we'll be doing that. So, you know, just coming together in agreement and just letting the spirit fall. So that's going to be awesome. And that's what we have for our prayer ministry. Yeah, let me um, say just something really quickly about that. There, there's going to be a specific... Um, date, if you will, every month where we'll fast together as a church. And, um, you know, to us, we realize it's far beyond just fasting the 21 days at the beginning of the year. God really honors our obedience. And uh, so we want to fast throughout the year. And uh, we want to be obedient to Him. And there are specific things that we'll be believing for with each fast that we do each and every month. And so we're excited about this prayer we're calling it a prayer focus ministry. We're excited about launching this prayer focus ministry, and we want you guys to be involved with it. If you say, hey, I would like to make phone calls throughout the week to people, to our congregation, then, then we'd love for you to participate in that. Um, or if you would like to set, be set up to where your phone gets, it pings to your phone and you answer phone calls for people that need prayer within our church, like, man, we would love we would love for you to help us in that way too, um, because it's going to be a 24-7 thing. Uh, because how many of you know, like sometimes in the midnight hour, we need someone to, to pray with us and believe with us. Come on, somebody say amen. Some of those, t- some of those times when you're really struggling, and you're like, well, I'll just wait till next Sunday. Now you can do it right now. And uh, we're excited about that. Amen. Amen. I think I'm next. I just realized as we're sitting here, though, that we all got the black pants memo today. Yeah. Y'all, that wasn't planned. This is like the first time I've worn black pants in like 10 years. Um, <laughs> just happened to put on some black pants today and we're all up here in our, uh, in our black pants. So anyway, I just chuckled as I was sitting up here noticing that we're all wearing like the same outfit on accident. Uh, so as we go into to this year, um, we've really taken, a, we've taken some time and really refocused like, what is, what is the church and what do we want the church to be? Like, so we're sitting here telling you about our vision and what better way to do that than to come together um, to learn like what we stand for. So raise your hand if you're a member of this church. All right, you're wrong. We don't have any members. <laughs> so we have a members group on Facebook um, but we, we're hitting three years old, and we're going to launch membership this year. Um, so how are we going to do that? How are we going to do that? So we're going to do that through a process called Growth Track. So point number five is we're going to launch Growth Track. So everybody here, uh, whether you've been here since day one, like uh, Jalen over here, or if this is your first day, 
and you're interested in learning more about like what we believe. Um, so it, Growth Track is going to, it's, you know, it's not entirely dissimilar from what you've probably seen before. Um, so we'll have a 101 class. That's going to be the discovery class where we're going to teach you, um, you know, the, the history of the church, how we came to be, what we believe, um, those sort of things. Um, 201 is going to be our serve team class. Um, that you'll have an opportunity to hear from all the ministry leaders in different areas of the church and where you would be a good fit. We'll do the spiritual gifting thing so you can find out where you're gifted to serve. Like if you can't sing, you're probably not supposed to sing on the worship team. It's okay. You can be on the prayer ministry and you can pray for people and maybe sing, but quietly. Um, and then and then 301 is all going to be about our core values. Um, and so, you know, a lot of places... You know, Growth Track is is a is a three week deal or a four week deal. Um, we're going to extend it. It's going to go about ten weeks uh, when it's all said and done. Nine or ten weeks, we'll get it all sorted out. Um, we'll get you the details of when it's going to happen, um, and and we're going to tie that into our small groups for for this semester. So it's all going to happen together as one thing um, with Growth Track. So, who's excited for Growth Track? Anybody? Yeah. All right. We'll see all three of you there. It'll be great. All right, <laughs> uh, and, and that's part of a, a broader focus um, that we should talk about. There's a, we're, uh, we're creating a, like a new department within the church, uh, which I'm like super excited about. Like, no, 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 this is like five and six and like all of it. Um, <laughs> so uh, this new department, we're going to call it Connections. Um, and so the church is, is all about people. Like, Jesus, Jesus came for people. Um, and so this year, we're going to make a priority um, focusing on connection and relationship with people um, and, and how we do that. So um, that's going to include the, the growth track. It's going to include our small group ministry. It's going to include our first impressions team and guest experience, all of that. Um, and then it's also going to include the, the number six point, which is we're going to launch freedom ministry this year. Yeah. So I'm like, I've wanted to launch Freedom Ministry since like day one. <laughs> um, so this has been a long time coming. Um, we were going to launch Freedom Ministry in February, um, but we decided uh, after some prayer and, and meeting as a staff that growth track was more important to get off the ground at the beginning of the year. Um, because, so, it, you know, we're a church plant, right? Um, and church plant books will tell you that if you don't have the culture you want by a hundred people, you need to kill it and start over. Because if you don't have the culture you want at a hundred, you're never going to have it at a thousand. And you definitely won't have it at 10,000. And so it's really important to us while we're still, like we're getting a lot closer to a hundred. Like I've been in services in this church when there were more people on the worship team than there were in the auditorium, right? Like well, we had some Sundays where it was, it was Pastor Austin, me, um, we had a guy named David who used to run our pro presenter, um, and then like Nathan and Taylor and Jordan, and then sometimes Maria had to work. Sometimes it was just, just one, one uh, you guys don't know Vincent, but um, there was one, one guy in the, <laughs> in, the, in the auditorium during worship, and uh, anyway, so we're getting, we're a lot closer to 100 than we were, you know, were then, and it's really important to us that we communicate to you guys what our values are. Um, and freedom is, is one of those values. Um, but all right, I'm going to do that. All right, so you guys know how a tuning fork works? Like a piano? So like when, when, you, when you have a tuning fork, um, if you're going to tune an 88 key piano, how many tuning forks do you need? You need 88. You need a tuning fork for every single string on the piano. Why? All right, so here's how a tuning fork works. When you, when you strike a key on a piano, so like an A is tuned to 440 hertz. I'm a nerd audio guy. This, this is my wheelhouse. But, so an A is tuned to 440 hertz. And if you get a tuning fork, it's going to have 440 like engraved on it. It will only respond to that one frequency. So if you have a tuning fork that's tuned to A2440, and you play C2, you can hold that tuning fork next to it all day long, and it won't make a sound. You start getting a little closer, 
you'll get a faint, you'll get a faint response from it. But when you play the same note that it's tuned to, it comes up and it matches intensity and pitch. So it'll be just as loud and it'll be on the exact same pitch. People aren't any different. <laughs> we all have a tuning fork internal to us, right? And our church is striking a chord. And so the people whose tuning forks are tuned to what we're doing are going to be drawn here. And if your tuning fork's not tuned to our church, that's okay. I want you to hear that. It really is okay. Now, we want everyone to be a part of here. We, we do. We're, I don't want anybody to leave. Like, I'm going to be the connections pastor. Like, that's my, that's my heart. Like, I want everyone to be here, right? Like, that's, I want everyone to be a part of what's going on. Um, but if you're not tuned to what we're doing, it's okay. Um, but we don't want anyone to leave. Um, like, nobody. Um, but that principle of resonance. <laughs> you can. You can. But don't. <laughs> Yeah, but, but, but we need, if, if we're going to have, if we're going to, if we're going to play a note right, right now, you may not know, you may not know what note we're playing. You may think you know what note we're playing. Maybe we're playing like an inverted, I don't know, get nerdy on some music theory, but we're going to define that for you over, over the course of growth track. Um, so I'd ask anyone who's, you know, give us a chance to get through that. Let us, let us show you. Um, what we believe and, and what we stand for. Um, and then you'll have an opportunity throughout Growth Track to make a decision to join through a membership covenant with the church. Um, and uh, so we're just really excited about defining who we are, what we believe, what our values are, um, and and just going forward with that. So Freedom Ministry, I'll do it. you want to say anything? So Freedom Ministry, I'll go real quick. It's going to be in three parts. So the whole purpose of freedom ministry is that Jesus didn't die just so you can go to heaven. Like, yeah, you're going to go to heaven one day, but that's not the reason, the only reason he died, right? He died so that you could have life and have life more abundantly. And we're going to learn how to live that life. And I'm going to teach you how to live that life. And we're going to start with the foundations. There's five foundations classes that we're going to go through together. So we'll go through, you know, all of them. We're going to redefine why Jesus came entirely. So we're going to reset the entire thing. Um, and then after the foundations classes, we'll have topical classes like freedom from depression, anger, anxiety, all that kind of stuff. So if you have requests for topics, you can submit those and we'll write up classes for them. Um, and then the final thing and probably the coolest part is freedom sessions, um, which we'll get into that. But those will be times where you have to have gone through foundations because we can't help you like solve things through a freedom lens if you don't know what a freedom lens is. So once you've gone through foundations, then you'll be eligible to take freedom sessions and those will be led by some of our staff. Um, and those are times where you'll come in with, you'll have two leaders and just you and we help facilitate a conversation with the Lord. Um, so super cool, very powerful, really excited about it. Uh, that's gonna be coming in the fall. Um, so we're going to launch Growth Track in the spring and then Freedom Ministry in the fall and uh, the whole Connections Department uh, uh, effectively now-ish, two weeks. Um, so yeah, excited. Yeah. That's awesome. Come on, that's good, right? There's, uh, we, got a, uh, we got just a few more, so hang tight here. Um, but there's something powerful about, about connection. You can come to a church and never feel connected. Okay, I'm going to say that again. You can come to a church and never feel connected. We're changing that. We're not going to be that church. You're going to feel connected here. But it's all relational. It's all about relationships. And we've got to learn how to connect with one another, right? It's your relationship ultimately with God. And if you don't got that straight, then you ain't going to have any other relationship straight. I mean, that's just that's just the bottom line. Uh, but... Connection is connection is our like our like magnets. Like here, take one. Take one. Caleb, take one. So this is this is me, right? This is everything about me. This is who I am. This is my foundation. This is what I believe. All of these kind of things. And I'm looking for people in life who can appreciate me for who I am. Right? Come on, we don't we all want that, right? We want, we want people to, to like us, yes, but what we want people to value who we really are. And it only comes by building relationship. And so when I meet Buster 
And I realized, man, like he really loves who I am. Like we share some things in common. He invites me to his house. We hang out. We love the Cowboys. Both of us love the, okay. You know, all Yo, those things hang, like hang, that. Time, time out. Yep. Last time you didn't pray for the Cowboys. I'm not doing it. We, I'm not doing no, no, it. No, no, we lost when you didn't pray. I know. I'm not praying for the Cowboys you, today. You need to pray extra hard. No, we're not praying at all, right? Okay. We're not praying at all. <laughs> Hang on. Robert, what do you say? Are we praying or are we not praying? Robert says uh, we're praying. I'm, I, I had people walk in the front door today and tell me not to do it. Oh, man. All right. So here we go. So watch this. So Buster, that's who you are. That's who God created you to be, all this kind of stuff. And this is, this is who I am. And we begin to build a relationship together. And the more that we, can, we connect, the more that we build a relationship, the closer and closer we get. Till eventually, all of a sudden, you got to turn that thing around. All of a sudden, we're together, right? messed up the whole illustration. We're connected. And now, now Buster is a part of who I am. I'm a part of who he is. We're in each other's lives. We, we know the good things about each other. We know the bad things about, we know the worst moments about each other. We're developing those relationships. But now it's not just little old me anymore. Now, I've, now I'm connected to someone that I know and love. And then I go over here and I meet Jalen. And, and we get closer and we develop a relationship. And the more that we spend time together, the more that we get connected together and all of that kind of stuff, then all of a sudden, boom, we're connected. And the great thing about this is, and I can come over here and I can get connected with Caleb. We can spend a lot of time together. Now this thing is strong. I, I started out with just one little piece, just little old me. But now it's like a backbone. It's strong now. It can't, it can't be broken. Now I can certainly rip this apart, of course. But these, this is strong. And this is what people are looking for. And this is what people need in churches right here. We need God. We need the Holy Spirit. We need to worship him. All those things are important. But this, at the end of the day, thank you, this is what people are really looking for right here, connection. Hey, can, can, I, can I tag yeah, on that real quick? Yeah, go ahead, because I'm done anyways. <laughs> Last two years have been hell, right, with COVID? Yep. Can, we just, can we agree with that? Um, did you know, if you go to the hospital with COVID, one of the things they give you in the hospital is an anti-anxiety medication. Do you know why? <laughs> because, like, this is like a whole thing, and I won't, but the last two years, like, the, the strategy of the enemy has been to cause disconnection. Like, that's where it comes from. That's his whole strategy with COVID. Like, you want to know what it is? It's to get people alone. Like, we use the analogy of a shepherd, right, with talking about the Lord. Like, if a wolf is going to attack a sheep, how does he do it? They, they wait till the pack runs off and there's one sheep by himself. And then the wolf pack goes and gets him. They don't, they don't come when there's a hundred sheep. A hundred sheep will, will, you know, they'll headbutt the, the, you know, the wolf and the shepherd will come over and smack him in the head and... If it's, you know, you all, you all heard my thing about the slingers, right? So it's the equivalent of like a Colt 45 pistol. So if the, if the shepherd's around, they ain't getting anywhere near there. It's important that, that we prioritize connection and relationships. That Like, I, I can't tell you like how, like it's just evident in the world today. The result, it's, it's been less than two years. It took less than two years for our entire culture to devolve where it was because of disconnection and isolation. And so we're coming together and saying that, like, not here. Amen. Amen. So, um, so here's the thing. So here's, here's, the, here's the challenge with it. If you feel disconnected, it's because you're not building relationships. It's your responsibility. So when we say, hey, we've got this large event happening, be there. When we launch groups, get plugged into a group. Don't stay at home. When we offer certain things, be a part of it. Because when you choose not to participate, you disconnect yourself from what God is doing together as a whole. We're connected. We need you. We need your magnet to come and connect with us. 
We need to make it stronger. We need to make our relationship stronger and better. So if you feel disconnected, it's simple. Get connected. Get connected. Get connected to the vine. I'm telling you, God's doing something and it's growing and it's tremendous. You need to get connected now before it's too late later, okay? I'm telling you, like get connected because this is what God's trying to do right now. And he's taught all of us, man, over the course of the last month, like this concept, like how important this is. And so when someone comes up to me and says, pastor, I feel disconnected, then my question is, what are you doing to feel disconnected? Why aren't you connecting yourself? Because we're trying to grow this thing, and we've got plenty of opportunities. So it's your job to get connected. But we're going to see to it that you do, right? We're going to push you. We're going to believe in you. We're going to encourage you, and we're going to see to it that you do get connected. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. All right. Amen. Finish us out, Jalen. So we're also going to be relaunching. I'm going to just put seven and eight together. We're going to be relaunching the men's, um, the men's ministry and also the women's ministry. So we're going to be having conferences for the women. What was that? The men got to do better than that, man. The, the yeah. women just shouted all the men. For real. Like, oh, come on. Man, all right, Let's hear yeah. it for men's ministry. Yeah, yeah, come on, man. Ooh, ooh, Let's ooh, go. Jesus. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Hey. Yeah, so so that was even with the four of us on the mic. That was still weak. <laughs> it's because we were the only ones that did it. Every <laughs> like, they're like, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. All right, hang on. Uh, all right, okay, all right, all right. Let's, let's do an experiment. Let's hear it from the men yeah. and the women. Ooh. All right, fellas, they win. <laughs> that Sorry. must be a tuning thing, a yeah. pitch thing. <laughs> it's like, it hurt. <laughs> yeah, that was the tuning fork. Drum. They're way up there. It's like, <laughs> yeah. All so right, guys, finish us out, brother. Men and, and the women, we're going to be getting we love together uh, bi-monthly. So we're going to be coming together and all that good stuff. Not only that, but we'll be having men's breakfast. And I hope we can do the women's breakfast, too. Yeah. You know, that will be good. The men's all right, men. Men. Challenge time. 38 weeks, starting in February, 6 a.m. Tuesday morning. Oh, yeah. I'm asleep. He's going to be there. But I'll be there. I'm going to come pick him up. <laughs> okay. I, and I don't want to hear a single excuse. I'm driving from Burleson. Like till like 7.30. We'll have you done before work. Well, then you can leave. Details it. will yeah. come later. Yeah. We'll, yeah, we'll get you picked up. All right, so... I'll get you details on the book, but we're going to meet men every, every Tuesday morning, 6 a.m. Um, we'll get you, we'll, we're going to pick a restaurant somewhere near here. Um, I, we'll, we'll figure out what works. Um, but I want to challenge men to, to be a part of this. Um, we're not buying the book for you. I'll get you the link so you can buy it. If, if, you, need, if you need help, let me know. We'll help you. Yeah, um, we'll buy but, sure. but we want, yeah. like, all right, men, well, it's, the it's time you to be. If you need a book, I'll get it. <laughs> if you need a book, I'll get it. Hey, that's right. But men, I want you guys to step up and be men. Um, like if, if the $20, if you, like seriously, come get me if you need help. Like we'll get you. We'll get you. Um, but if you can afford it, like I want you to make the investment and buy it. Like there's, there's something about when you put your own dollars to it that you get tied to it a little bit. So like I want you guys to purchase. So I'll get you the info. Um, we're going to go through this together um, for 38 weeks. We should get it done before the end of the year. We may have to take a few weeks off here and there, but uh, we're going to meet um, and prioritize getting together and connecting as men uh, once a week and, and like doing it early in the morning. I, I hate the mornings so much, um, but we're going to do it <laughs> every, every Tuesday, 6 a.m. Hey, okay, so ladies, let, let me hear from you if you are looking to get better connected with other ladies. Come on, raise your hand nice and high. Let me hear from you. Let me see you. See? That's, that's pretty much every woman in the place. Wants to build relationships, what to get, wants to get connected, all that kind of stuff. Men, let me see from you. You want to get further connected with other men in this place. Awesome. See? We are all looking for connection. We all are. 
You're not alone. Believe me, you are not alone. We are all looking for a connection. And so we're starting this thing, Jalen, and we're launch- relaunching these, this men's and women's ministry. Did you have anything more to add to that? Not, yeah, I, I did. Um, you know, God didn't call any of us to be lone wolves. He's, he's called us to do life together, and it's so important. Like Buster was saying, you know, when a sheep is by itself, the wolf can easily attack. When we're by ourselves, the enemy can easily attack and put doubt, depression, anxiety, all these different things in our head. But where we lack faith, we have we can have a brother, you know, or a sister to come and make it to stand in that gap of faith for us. Where we lack that faith, that person will have that faith, you know. And it's it's just so it's a beautiful thing when we're all connected, and it's important. That's what God called us to do. He called us to be the church. That's the body of the Christ. That's the body of Christ. So I encourage all of you to get connected. It's important. It's vital. We need it. Amen. Hey, Josh, I'm going to have you come on up now. Um, just, just you is is fine, or whoever, Josh or Nathan, whoever wants to play guitar softly behind us. But let me go over these eight things with you really quickly, and then you'll start seeing these eight things everywhere. And here's the thing. Uh, here's our here's our mission statement. Right, like impact lives, build faith, restore the city, raise up leaders. All of the things that we just gave you, eight things that we're doing this year, point back to the mission statement. Every single one of them, because we did not, we did not want to put together a goal unless it reflected who who we were and what we stand for as a church. Um, Because we could have just put out a whole bunch of fancy stuff. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do that. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do that. But if it didn't point to that. We're all wrong. So we've gone well over time already, but we do want to give you an opportunity. So if you have any questions about any of the eight things, I'm going to recap one last time. Then I want you to write those down, okay? And then uh, Miss Vicky is going to stand up right now, and she'll be uh, – you can come up here if you want. You don't have to stand in the back, but um, you can come and hand her these cards. Um, or she's going to stay back there. Are you going to stay back there or are you going to come up here? Okay, she's going to walk around. And if you have any questions about what we're doing as a church, what the vision is, um, questions about any of these eight things that we named today, whatever, then get those to us. And if you didn't have time to write it or you can't think of anything right now and you want to submit some, then we will have those. We will, excuse me, we will have that available to you where you can still submit that, okay? So again, number one is this. We will begin and complete phase three of Heart for the City campaign. Come on, somebody say Amen. We will, number two, invest in the local churches and ministries. Somebody say amen. Amen. Number three, we're going to launch our community outreach ministry. Somebody say amen. Amen. All right. Number four, we are going to launch our prayer focus ministry. Somebody say amen. Amen. Number five, we are going to launch growth track. Come on. Somebody say amen. Amen. Number six, we are going, oh, you just said it here. That's fine. You can come up here with them. Number six, we are going to launch Freedom Ministry. Somebody say amen. 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 Number seven, we are going to relaunch our men's ministry. Somebody say amen. amen. And number eight, we are going to relaunch our women's ministry. Come on, somebody say amen. Amen. Those eight things, that's what we're doing, church. That's our goal for this year. We're going to accomplish each and every one of those things. Amen. Again, the theme is to invest, right, into our congregation and into our community. That's what this is all about. We want to invest back into you. You may feel like, well, I just show up on the weekends and I don't feel invested into. Okay. I'm sorry if you don't. And I take full responsibility for that. So please forgive me. But this year, we're investing into your lives. Okay? We're investing into you because we believe in you, we love you, and we want the best for you. Right? We want you to get connected. That's the biggest thing. We want you to get connected. We want you to grow with us. Amen? Uh, Okay, this is a great question. Love this. Does invest into oversight mean above the tithe or does the church not tithe? That's a great question. Thank you so much, whoever asked that. So we've never invested into our direct oversight. Our direct oversight is Pastor Josh and Leslie Brown at Overflow Church there in Grand Prairie. 
And uh, when we first launched the church, when we first heard from the Lord to launch the church, we were like, Lord, who do you want to be our oversight? Pastors, okay, that just are pastoring shepherds over this house. And uh, the Lord opened the door for us with Pastor Josh and Leslie. And they have been an incredible support. They serve on the board here at Church of the City. And um, they've been just a wonderful blessing to us. They've never asked for a penny at all. That, but there's no, there's no need for that. But we thought this year, you know what? Like, they've been such a positive impact on our church like, they've been such a blessing. They've been there to support our staff when we've needed them. They've encouraged us. They've prayed for us. They've held, helped us make really big decisions. So let's invest into them. That's what it's about. It's not about a tithe, okay? It's literally about just investing back into who invests into us, okay? But we are doing this, just to make it clear. We are taking 10% of everything that comes into the church and we're sending that 10% out. How does that 10% go out, you ask? That 10% goes out to local churches. That 10% goes out to our oversight. That 10% goes out to the church network that we're a part of, Global Ministers Network, under Pastor Adam McCain in Cedar Hill, goes into that. 10% goes into helping new churches start up and 10% goes into helping the churches that we have great relationships with already, such as Pastor Devondre, right there. So we're taking 10% of everything that comes in and it's our tithe back as a church. And I believe God is, that God blesses that. You say, well, Pastor, don't we need that here? Yeah. But God was gonna bless it When we sow it, it's the principle of sowing and reaping. You want to reap a harvest? You got to sow first. You got to do it. That's how it works. You can't just stand in front of a field and expect fruits and vegetables to grow if you didn't plow that ground, sow some seed into that ground, cover that ground back up with dirt, water that baby every single day and take care of it. You'll never get your harvest. So you've got to sow in order to receive the harvest. Yeah. Well, all right. So if anyone else has cards, hang on. I know some people were writing as we were talking. So if you have one that you haven't sent forward, stick your hand up and we'll come get it. Um, If not, we've got, I think, two more. Okay. And then uh, several. Thank you. uh, One of these was just, can I volunteer for the homeless ministry? So I've got your information and absolutely 100%. Yes, you can volunteer. Yes. Um, the other question that I have is, uh, how do we as a country get undivided again? <laughs> um, <laughs> so not, it's not specific to, to our, our goals for this year, and, and I'm not going to take a long time on this. Um, but if you've noticed this, this principle of connection, like if you've noticed this kind of tribalism that started happening in our country, have you noticed that there's... There's some force, and I'm not going to say what I think it is, but there's some force that's causing our country to divide into groups. And then these groups, so whether it's Republican and Democrat or it's, you know, the church and the world, there's there's these different groups that we become a part of. And, and when you become a part of one of these groups, you know, it comes with a set of rules that you have to not like the other side, right? Um, so... The, the answer of how we heal the country, in, in my opinion, is, well, we start by healing your community. And like our community, community is, is a broad word, but our community is it's in this room. And so we start by connecting with our community. And, and you know, we don't, you know, I, we've lost the art as people to say, I disagree with you, but I still love you. Like, if we could just learn that one phrase, that would heal our country, right? Like, I disagree with you, but man, I like your shirt. <laughs> like, just start with that, <laughs> um, and, and, and then you'll see it go from there. That's good. Um, next one, I think I understand what you're saying here, but basically is... Where will the men's breakfast take place, the time, all that kind of stuff? Kind of a question of launching 
in February is I guess what you're really asking on this card. Um, we don't know the exact launch dates for every specific thing. We do know the launch date for uh, growth track for sure. Um, but th thankfully we have all of 2022, but we're not going to waste any time. I'm not saying we're going to launch this men's ministry, women's ministry, all this kind of stuff. We're going to wait till like December or something. We're not going to do that. Um, but all of these things will come soon. And so we've now given you the vision. We've made it clear. Okay. As Habakkuk says, right, we've made it clear. And now we're going to work out all the details. And so, you know, we're looking for people, you know, that, you know, for example, we say we're starting this outreach ministry. And one of the things that we're going to do is nursing home. We need someone to step up and say, hey, let me be in charge of that part. We're launching and helping with the homeless ministry. Brother Terry's already been doing stuff, so maybe he'll continue to run that thing. But, you know, we need someone who's going to take the reins of that. So us four, we can't, or anybody else in this room, we can't do all of it and do all of the work. Um, so we're going to need men and women of God to step up and help us in some of these areas, okay? Um, you know, and it, it requires responsibility, of course. Um, and and that, that's what this is about today is, you know, being responsible to invest into our congregation. Amen? Yeah, and did you know that you never look more like Jesus than you do when you serve? So you never look more like Je Jesus said the Son of Man didn't come to be served but to serve. So if if you got a problem serving, you need to check your heart. Yeah. When we want to we want to make sure that everybody's connected that way and that you are able to to serve. Yeah, go ahead. And one more. I won't I'll make it short, but the question is what are you what all are you going to do for youth group in the future? So uh, yeah. That's a great card. Well, yeah, so it's, it's my card, you know, it's meant for me. Um no, uh, talking to my youth before the year started, one thing we're going to start doing is having more events outside of the church. Wednesday night is amazing for all of us who come uh, and experience what we experience on Wednesday nights and, and having our volunteers be involved. And, and uh, it's incredible, but connecting outside of the church is also important as well for our youth. So just having game nights and just going to main event and, and doing different events outside of the church together is what we want to focus more on. Uh, doing events like lock-ins. I know we were talking about that this week uh, with some of the youth. I think that would be really fun, but just connecting more outside of the church so we can get to know each other better um, and we can connect and get closer. Um, you know, another thing too is our outreach on social media platforms. Uh, I know right now that's big, especially with quarantine that we've been dealing with for the past couple of years. Uh, I'm going to try to build our TikTok page uh, and reach more of the youth on that type of platform. Uh, send more messages, more scriptures, just have more of an outreach for our youth is very, very important. We're going to try to build that platform this year. Um, so those are just some of the things that we'll be doing for the youth uh, this upcoming season, and we're extremely excited for it. That's great. All right, if you have any further questions, just feel free after church to give them to us, or if you need to think about it, maybe for a week or something or whatever it may be, then feel free to do so as well. We want to make sure that we certainly answer whatever questions you may have. Did everybody enjoy this morning? Thank you for allowing us to go well over time. I, I appreciate that you didn't just leave us and abandon us okay um i'm thankful for that uh, but i'm gonna i'm gonna pray um, i'm gonna pray over this vision okay and pray over what you received in your hearts today and then uh and then caleb will close us out here so father we just thank you lord for this morning we thank you jesus lord that we have spoken out your word god that you have declared over us for our for this year but lord we've also spoken out the vision now and we've made it plain and clear before the people, Father. So I pray, God, Lord, that each and every one of us in this room and all those that are watching online, all of our church family online today, that they would grab a hold of this vision, Father, and they would make it true and relevant to themselves, Lord. And Father God, that we would all walk in unity as we obtain these goals. So God, give us ideas, give us strategies, give us plans, motivate us and encourage us if we need it. God, if we feel disconnected, God, show us what it takes to get us back connected again. God, help us, Lord, 
in this process of this next year as we invest into this uh, congregation, but as we invest into this community, Lord, to really understand what that means and to be a part of it. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for this vision. We thank you, Lord, that you have given it to us, Father. And Lord, the vision is yours. Lord, it came from you in the first place. So Lord, we trust you with it. And we know, Lord, that we are going to accomplish every single thing, Lord, that you have set before us. So Father, we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, Caleb. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope the Lord spoke to you through today's message. If you have any prayer need or praise reports, please send us an email at cotcdfw at gmail.com. Please like and share this message so we can reach as many people as possible. We hope you have a great week. We'll see you soon.